Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and building winning teams. My special guest today was our star quarterback for our University of Hawaii Rainbow Warrior football team in 2000 and 2001, and is entering his fourth season as our head coach. He has taken our Rainbow Warrior football team to two bowl games in the past three years, and he definitely goes beyond the lines because of his great values, principles, and character. He is Coach Nick Rolovich, and today we are going beyond football. Coach Nick. Great Rusty. having you here today. Thank you. I'm honored. How's Beautiful everything? studio. Good. Yeah. Glad to be here. Now, I want to, we have a lot to talk about. Okay. Right. And I want to know, first of all, mm -hmm. how did you meet your wife, Analea? Mm. It's a great story. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah. Let's start it off. Uh, I think it was October, maybe November, a day much like today. Yeah. <laughs> Fresno State football game. Third down, fourth quarter, I look up in the stands for some reason, and then I see this beautiful girl in a bikini cheering, and I <laughs> yeah. said, that's going to be my wife. Yeah. That's not true, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's the story I tell, though. <laughs> uh, we met in college, we were both students at UH, and it was somewhere around the dorms, and it kind of came from there. And then, you, you, Coach Nick, you have four kids, yeah. and it's such a beautiful family. What are their names? I got Daniel, Alana, uh, Patrick, and William. I got twins. Patrick and William were twins. How old are they? They're about to be six. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It goes fast, like everyone tells you. Believe you, them. You know, if you have one more kid, you, you can have your own uh, basketball team. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you end up coming to Hawaii? Um, went to junior college in San Francisco. Yeah. Had no scholarships out of high school. Wanted to keep playing. Had a, had a school in the area that, that was well known for its not only getting guys opportunities, but playing good football. Um, and I didn't really have a set path other than um, athletics, you know, possibly fire department, police, you know, I was on that road. And, uh, but I wanted to keep playing. And I went there and played a couple seasons. And then that was right when Coach Jones uh, had turned it around in 99. So there was a lot of talk. Um, there were some connections with that staff and our, my head coach at uh, City. And, you know, I just started watching them throughout the year and talking. And I just felt. Unbelievable offense, but there were better people. They were real. They were honest. They weren't trying to sell me something. And, and I took a lot from that because it felt, I felt most comfortable with them. I felt like those were the, the that's who they were. They weren't trying to put on a show. Yeah. And I, I was looking for that. Now, Coach Nick, when you were playing, and I remember watching that UTEP game, mm -hmm. and you got benched at halftime. Yeah. What happened? Uh... I want to say it was like eight for 27 in the first half. Yeah. They played a lot of man. I couldn't hit anything. My progressions were off. Um, I remember being in the training room at halftime and Coach Jones coming in and said, hey, we're going to give Tim a shot here. And, and that was the last of it for you know, most of that season. Um, but it started, it wasn't just, that was the peak of playing bad. But the, the eight months, nine months before in preparation when I just arrived here, I didn't prepare the right way. I made bad decisions. Um, and not only was I pulling myself, or not allowing myself to be as good as I can be, um, I was able to, not able to, but I pulled guys away from their mission or our overall team mission and probably enjoyed uh, college in Hawaii a little too much. Um, and it was, it was a terrible thing because we, we lost all the momentum that was gained in 99. You know, the, the island had come alive and, and United with the WAC championship and the turnaround and and because of my eight months of I would say mediocre mediocre uh, preparation attention to detail care lack of a goal you know just happy to be there um, that that led us to have a team that didn't play well on the field in two thousand yeah so that was a really good personal learning experience for you now as a team. Did you guys have a critical turning point um, when you were on the team in terms of how the team could, could have gotten either worse or really good? 
Um, that year, we kind of just stayed steady and didn't, didn't really play very well. Not, definitely not to our capabilities. Um, and, and I think UTEP, for me, was, was personally that, that final light bulb and wake-up call. You've been an idiot. You haven't done things the right way. Yeah. Um, but I think the following off season, you know, I had been benched. Timmy was a starter. He played well for a true freshman coming in, and um, you know, and he was the guy in spring. He was the guy in fall camp. And I just, I said, I don't care if I get another rep. I will not disrespect this game, or the coaches that gave me a chance, or if I do get another opportunity, I will not take for granted. Uh, aloha that this fan base in this island had given me when I arrived. I took it for granted when I got here, and I was going give, to give back as much as I could. Yeah. Let's talk about that amazing, incredible BYU game in 2001. Mm -hmm. I mean, BYU was ranked number nine in the nation, undefeated. You threw for eight touchdowns, 543 yards, winning the game 72 to 45. What do, re what do you recall from that game? I think we, the game was, uh, it was, it was a surreal of an experience that I've had in my life, but I think you take a step back, you know, uh, UTEP, the following year when I got an opportunity to play at SMU, and I think we were down 17 points, and sitting there in halftime, and Chris Brown, I'll never forget, came up to me, face painted, uh, you know, and, and told me that this team believes in me, and that was my final, um, maybe, repentance for what I had done and I had, I had, had resolved or whatever and got back in the good graces. But for, for me not living here, growing up here, having a local boy who was the alpha male on that football team grab me and say, hey, we're with you, that, that gave me the confidence. And then I think it started kind of everyone kind of getting on the same page and led to the, to the BYU game. We knew we weren't going to a bowl game, um, but we knew we were playing well. We were playing the best we played all year. Um, there was no doubt. It was, it was like slow motion. But everybody contributed, Chad Owens, um, the whole offense. But you look at the defense, and, and, and I think they had, like, caused nine fumbles that game. We had turnovers. We had excitement. We had fan engagement. We had um, something that a lot of people, even today, still, t still say that was a really great memory at Aloha Stadium for us and our family. And that was such a better feeling for me than that night at UTEP when I knew I'd let so many people down. Yeah. Well, I mean. That, I, that was such a perfect game in so many ways. And then you finished your college career, your last three games, throwing over 500 yards per game, scoring at least 52 points in each of the three games. I mean, how was it to feel like you just had such a great ending to your college career? Um, I, I get, you know, a lot of people say you threw for, you know, this many yards, but I, I, it was really us. You know, it was all those linemen that would pull me off the ground or, you know, would pick me up when I was out of bounds. And it's all those receivers working together. It was, it was, it, there was an unselfishness there that, that was so powerful. In, and that's what it takes in the run and shoot. There has to be an element of unselfishness. Um, it's got to be as important for you to be so good on your route that you know I'm going to score a touchdown. It is for me to catch that, or you to catch the same touchdown on a different play. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's critical, or else it's just, you know, just another offense. Yeah. When you get to that real high level of it, when it's like, can't be stopped, um, I, I believe it's the unselfishness and understanding of the offense that, that really sets it apart. Now, Coach Nick, when you became head coach just over four years ago mm -hmm. now, um, why did you feel you were ready for your first head coaching position? Um, I wasn't ready for my first head coaching position. I, I was ready for my first head coaching position at Hawaii. Um, I wasn't going around searching head coaching jobs. Um, one thing that I've been kind of happy with my, in, in, since I've been coaching is not being uh, a self-promoter as much as um, just being understanding that if you do a great job where you're at, you know, kind of like bloom where you're planted. It was great a job you can do here, and, and then you'll make, your opportunities will come. But I felt I still had something to give back to Hawaii. Um, it's fans. I had to, 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 to say thank you for what it did for me, you, my wife and kids, my opportunities in NFL Europe or, or the Broncos or Arena League. That, that wasn't possible without 
Hawaii in general. And, and I also felt like I needed to say thank you for just the experience of living in a place where it truly didn't matter who you were as far as a physical being, but you know, we have a community that really thrives on, on Aloha. I mean, it's such an easy thing to do, and it's such a great way to live. You yeah. know, I, I travel a lot, especially these last couple months, and I go to these cities and say, would I trade what we have for this? And I, I still haven't said yes. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's more, it's, it's the beaches right here, nice, you know, all, <laughs> all that stuff is great, but I think it's the feeling you get when you wake up in the morning and, you know, there's, it's just, it's a real, I think it's the right way to live. Yeah. You know, Coach Nick, I always say that everything starts with the head coach or the CEO. Your first year coaching, you took us to a bowl game. You won that bowl game. And you took us to two bowl games in the past three years. And last season was our first winning season since 2010. What are your goals for your team this year? Kind of put, talked about phase two. Um, what is, we, we have to keep improving. I, you know, the bowl win was was so awesome yeah. for those guys. Those guys, especially the seniors, you know, Corey Rasmussen, Leo, I mean, Marcus Kemp, these guys are, are, are at their core great people that continue to work hard, continue to attack the process. Um, I was honored they gave belief in, in, our, in myself and the staff, and um, they didn't hesitate. and They yeah. wanted to go out as winners, and, and they deserve to. Um, you know, then just to be able to say a couple years later, all right, now we've won. We woke up, we were better in most of the games than, than, you know, being 500 was great and getting a bowl win, but then now you're taking another step mentally. Um, and I probably brought up the Mountain West Championship too soon for our program. I don't know if we were ready mentally, um, but we talk about phase two, um, and, and I think it, it encompasses everybody, not just myself, um, the coaching staff, the team. I think it's equipment, training, administration. Uh, fundraising, everybody. Now let's see what we can really build this to. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it get to such great heights, whether it's the Holiday Bowl, whether it's the Sugar Bowl, um, and, and just having some of the alumni come back and inject that pride back into our student athletes. Um, there's, there's a very high belief in not only what we're trying to do, but how we try to do it as far as engaging the community, especially the young kids and, and being role models and I can't thank our team enough um, for just taking on that challenge to, and realizing that, yes, I can, I can make a lot of things better by doing something good today. You yeah. know? And, and for me, it was, with, with Hawaii, it's always give first, you know, and, and then things will come after. I don't think it's come, take, 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 take. I don't yeah. think this doesn't work. Um, but I feel like I've grown. I've, I've, I've learned to pass off. Uh, you know, I was talking to a coach the other day, and I was Craig Bull at Wyoming. He said, "Are you still making the playlist for practice music?" I said, "No, I'm not doing that." <laughs> you know, hey, somebody, you know, everyone's more than capable of handling their side of the job, and um, I think the trust in the staff and all the surrounding. And we have a lot of people insulating this team, and, and they're all at the core, I believe, good people. Yeah, I mean, no, you're doing so many great things, and you're right. Everybody has pride in, in you and our football team. What do you do to keep things fun with your team? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could be anything. It could be anything. I like mean, what? <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the, the water balloon fight, Co <laughs> coaches versus uh, players. I, that, was, that was fun. I like you know, bringing in the hypnotist and <laughs> giving a kid a scholarship. Um, I, I, I think those moments, um, along with holding up the, the trophy of the bowl game or, you know, you know John Ursua catching that touchdown at Las at versus UNLV, and it's really those moments that you you can't take back, and, and, and the bond is so strong versus with with this age group, and, and from my experience in this game, it's very hard, yeah. and and you you develop a bond that is um it, it's just it's stronger than you can build without you know competition or sport, I think. And, and with social media and, and now, like, like, like your show, like you're saying, it's always going to be there for them to go back. And, and it's, it's like a photo album that they can just access anytime. Completely agree. Yeah. Coach, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond football. All right, let's do it.
It is fantastic having Coach Nick Rolovich here today. He's such a great role model. And you are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. We will be back in one minute. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show, and it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is our former star quarterback and current head coach of our University of Hawaii Rainbow Warrior football team. He is Coach Nick Rolovich, and today we are going beyond football. Coach Nick, tell me about June Jones. What did you learn from him? Well, I loved his mindset as a coach, the confidence that he instilled in us. Um, I think that go goes side by side with the offensive philosophy. Um, it was, it was, it, the other thing I learned from him was he, he really had a, a genuine love for this place. Yeah. And, and when you first get here, you, you know, there, you have so much to learn. Um, so I was always curious, what were those things that really caught his attention? You know, he loves the golf. Yes, he does golf. But I think it was deeper than that. I, I think it was a lot of the stuff we talked about earlier. How just the, the quality of living when you open your eyes in the morning in Hawaii because of the feeling of the people. Um, the food's great. The music's great. Um, but I think just he, he fell in love with what I then fell in love with was just the, the, the mindset and, and the heart of the people here. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Coach Nick, who's your football idol? Joe Montana. Why? Because he won Super Bowls in, <laughs> in my hometown growing up, and I just I, I thought he, uh, he 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 inspired me to be a quarterback. Yeah, no, I love Joe Montana. Yeah. I mean, he's a class act. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk about my book Beyond the Lines. In literal terms, a tennis court has lines and boundaries. A okay. football field has lines and boundaries. A business has parameters. I'm always trying to have people do things beyond the lines, beyond the parameters, to affect what happens inside the lines, inside the parameters. And you're doing the same. What kind of things are you doing that's going beyond the lines to really help affect your team? Um, I, you know, Dick Tomey said this, you know, football is not complicated, people are. Yeah. It's about gaining trust, having the, the players truly believe that you have the best intentions of the football team, even though it may not be exactly aligning with your, your individual goals, yep. um, and, and that they have the, the confidence that you are making the best decision in, in the entire organization's, um, for the organization's future. Yep. Um, you know, but I think they believe that myself and the guys on staff truly care about making them into better men, however we get them. Yep. They could be angels. They could have had a really tough life and, and not a lot of great role models, but um, hopefully when they leave after three or four or five years, they leave with a degree, they leave knowing that they've improved as a, as a person and, and that with an understanding of how they can um, help the world around them and, and hopefully a few championships and, and bowl games and those kind of experiences. So uh, we say it all the time. We are in, I don't want to coach in the NFL. Not this time, not right now in my life. I don't know if I ever will, but we can still have a real impact on improving the, 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 the community here, the world that as a big picture, because we raise better men, husbands, fathers, community leaders, 
you know, and, and say that to them so they understand they're going through that process right now. And pretty soon they are going to have an impact on people, um, not just the little kids watching them in the stands right now. They're going to, their jobs, their families, all those things are going to matter. No, I like hearing that. And that's why you're a great coach. You know, for me, I always, my first priority as a coach was to develop champion athletes of character first and then great tennis players second. You're the same way. You, you feel so strongly about developing their well-being and you have empathy for them. I mean, how important is character for you? Well, I think everyone needs to understand that, that young people, whether it's from 14 to 22, um, it, is, it is a very difficult world to live in right now um, with all the information, social media, um, pressures for how they look or how they're supposed to act or how people think about them. How many likes did I get? It, there's stresses on this generation that um, many of us haven't had to go through, and I think we need to be conscious of that and, and be there for them more than, than, than just, just football. There's so much information about football out there, and guys that love it, they watch all that stuff. How can I be, you know, run this play better, or quarterback play? But um, it, the, the navigation of, of late high school and college right now, I think, is, can be difficult for males and females. And we've got to be conscious of, of mental illness. I think we're seeing so, the numbers are so high in that uh, arena. Um, you have to be conscious of the complete person, or you're not going to get the best, which in turn is not going to make you the best on the field. Completely agree. Let's talk about discipline. Okay. You know, I always say before you can win a game, you have to not lose it. Mm -hmm. And I know discipline is real important to you. How, what are you doing to help your team with discipline? I believe it's true. Most games are lost than are won. Um, penalties, turnovers, uh, lack of effort, things like that. Those are the things you've got to continually coach. Um, my process of, of discipline, I tend to give guys chances. Yeah. I want to believe that we are going we to get through this together and you're going to come out a better person. Um, there's times where... It, it goes too far, and it's just not, not the best fit anymore. But, um, you know, hearing you got so many different situations. This is this kid's life. And you have, and, and I didn't like when I first heard the term, you know, everyone will be treated fair but not equally, right? It's for your situation, Rusty, I don't know, but you might need more of us as coaches to help you get you through that. You know, a guy who, who's had great role models of parents and uh, schooling, you know what I mean? When he starts making bad decisions, it's, it's different than maybe a kid who's only known bad decisions because he had to survive. Yeah. I mean, the, the range of student athletes and, and their first 18 years of life is, is very, um, it's, it's a wide range. And I think you've got to be conscious of that, um, but also know in the end, that, that you care about them, but, you know, we can make mistakes, but multiple mistakes become a habit, and that's when you got to really say, is this, is this going to be our path, or are we going to have to part ways? Yeah, let's continue on that, that topic about mistakes right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most elite organizations, the best championship teams, I mean, you can make a mistake, mm -hmm. but I always say you can never make the same mistake twice if you want to be a championship team. Right. Tell me about your thoughts about mistakes. Um, you would like them to retain, right? Yeah. The the lessons, but now you got to be how how am I teaching? How does this kid learn? Does he need to be on the board? Does he need to go on the field and take the reps? Um, that's on the field, you know. Then I think you got to if, if if multiple mistakes are made, you got to look at your coaching uh, attempt at this young man. Yeah. Does he need more one on one time? Does he need more film? Does he need more reps? Um, how can we get him more reps? Um, off the field, I think you're, you're at a place where, you know, you, can't, you really can't make the same mistake twice because then you obviously haven't learned the lesson. Yeah. Um, and that's just being a person. You know, I, I kind of separate the football lessons. I would love for Cole McDonald, hey, you know, throw that hitch, throw that hitch, then, you know, the, the corner sinks back, but he comes up and throw the corner out, you know, but that takes some time. That takes some, we throw a lot at these kids on the field, and, and there's a, there's a progression they need to go through, and everyone's is kind of different. You know, yeah. Shevin had a good base coming in. Now he's working on some different things where Cole's doing, 
you know, and Justin's doing this. It's, it's, they're all on their different – we just want them to meet as being the best quarterback they can be within the offense later on. But um, the mistakes off the field are the ones where you're like, you know, either we're going to – you know, you understand, and you're talking about, you know, everything. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's hard there. Everybody's paparazzi with the camera. You have to be uh, always on your toes about being a good person. And, yeah. and they all know the difference between right or wrong. You know, we, and and I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody. I tested the limits. At some point, you got to realize, you know, let's, let's get back on track and what's my real goal here. Yeah, minimizing unforced errors is so important. Mm -hmm. For my team, I would always have them welcoming adversity, looking forward to challenges. Are you, what are you doing to have your team look forward to challenges as well? I tell them to always be, on, be ready for their hero moment. Yeah. We talk about it. And, and they laugh at me sometimes, but, um, you know, you never know when Devin Stubblefield gets in the game in Army and has that big catch in the early part of that game. You never know when that opportunity, you can't script it. You can only prepare and be ready for it mentally uh, by visualizing it, you know, and, and when that moment comes, and it could, it, plenty of them are coming off the field, you know, but I really stay on our guys, and, and some of the... Some of the things are pretty funny what they say as far as their hero moments as a joke, but I, at least they are thinking about it, you know, um, whether it's in the community, you know, calling the police, doing something. They, they're always looking, or not always, but I try to hit them with, hey, always be ready to be that great person when, when the time is now, it, it you know, comes to you on and off the field. Yeah. Coach Nick, you know, in terms of success, everyone – Every successful person defines success in different ways. How do you define success? If, if I can close my eyes at night and say I tried my best um, for this football team, this university, my family, and, you know, if, if I can close my eyes and say that, um, and there's plenty of nights I don't, but, you know, I can do this better. I can, we always, we're getting into that phase two. We have to think about it more. We've got to be greater than we were yesterday. And, and, you know, I, which can just never, never settle. Part of it is, you know, just sprinkling this world with, with great men as, after they come through the University of Hawaii football program. Yeah. I have, a, I have what I call my 1% principle okay. to try to improve 1% in every part of your life every mm -hmm. single day. Every part of your life. That's every a good, part that's of a your good life. addition. We use that in the athletic department. Dave Matlin has brought that up. Um, but I like... You know, now you're talking about four or five yeah. different one percents, and and yes, you you wake up thinking that way. You may not always accomplish it, but you'll get better. Yeah, Coach Nick, it's been great having you on the show I'm today. Honored, Rusty. Thank you. I want to beautiful thank studio. you. <laughs> beautiful studio. <laughs> want to thank you for being on the show and sharing your insights with everybody. Well, I'm excited about the book. It looks like a a good read, and I think there's a lot of information that comes pretty quickly in it. So I'm excited, and I'll get back to you on the report. Awesome. Thank you, Coach <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Rusty. We definitely need more Coach Nicks in the world. And as you can see, he's such an amazing, extraordinary leader. And we're lucky to have him as our head coach. So let's support him and our Rainbow Warrior football team. And I want to thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Coach Nick and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.